All right, guys, welcome back. Southeastern 14 and uh, Max Barr with me once again, and it is time to start our college basketball season previews for every team in the SEC. Max, we've been researching and researching and waiting and waiting. I know it's football season, and I know people um, are enjoying football right now. As we record this, week three uh, in the SEC football is upon us, but we are starting our basketball previews because we're less than two months away. From the start of the season and so we begin max with the must bus themselves the arkansas razorbacks who as you and i've talked this summer high expectations for this group this season yeah high expectations i mean i think we actually had them number one in our way too early a few months ago um but yeah college basketball is right around the corner it's going to sneak up on us pretty quick here as football kind of rambles on um, a little bit of a dry spell in the college basketball world this past month. There hasn't been much news. There hasn't been much waiver. There are all these waiver stuff. We haven't heard anything really. Um, so I'm just happy to be back talking college basketball, talking Arkansas. Yep. Um, I am too. And it's good to be back. <laughs> it is. I know. It's like Max and I are like, hey, we haven't talked to each other in a while, but <laughs> I know it. we are we are ready now. And again, we are recording this mid September. So if you're watching this October, closer to the season, start of November, keep that in mind. Um, things can change in terms of injuries and all that kind of stuff. But we start with the Arkansas Razorbacks, and we've got kind of a format we're going to use here. We're going to start off talking about their head coach. That is, of course, Eric Musselman, who, uh, as we know, Max has led the Razorbacks to at least 20 wins in all four seasons uh, highlighted by three straight appearances in the sweet 16 or beyond. We know back-to-back elite eights a couple years ago there. Uh, they beat Kansas last year to get to the sweet 16 before running into UConn. But I mean, if we're, if we're grading a coach, uh, I think it's easy to say that Muss has delivered uh, in his four seasons in Fayetteville. Um, you know, the one thing I think I've always kind of pointed out is, Sure, we've seen his team start a little slow in conference play, um, but I think when you consider how many new guys they bring in every year from the transfer portal, uh, you know, freshmen, with last year they had six freshmen, I think, on the roster. When you add that many new players, I think it can take some time to put together. And I think, as I always say, I think you trust and must because even if they start slow, they figure it out every year, and I think that's kind of the strength of his team so far at Arkansas. Yeah. I think that last year was actually a better year for Arkansas in the grand scheme of things than people kind of remember when they think back to last year. Arkansas finished 22nd in Ken Palm. They were a top 25 team analytically. Um, They finished third in the SEC in Ken Palm, uh, only behind Alabama and Tennessee. Um, The computers didn't really like Texas A&M last year. They were only, they were 33rd. So, I mean, Arkansas you know, really put up some good numbers uh, on the analytics front. Uh, if you look at you look at Muss the past three years. I know he's been at Arkansas for four years, but that first year was COVID. And I don't. Anytime I'm looking at stats or trends, I kind of try to leave that COVID year out just yeah. because of how much of a mess it was. Um, the past three years, Ken Palm, he's been 18th, 18th, 22nd. Um, and all three years have looked very similar offensively and defensively. You look at the offensive ranks for Arkansas the last three years, 43, 53, 54. So always right around that 50th mark on offense. And then defensively, always top 20. They've been 10th, 11th, 17th. So the, the, the past three years, Arkansas has had pretty much the same team on paper uh, statistically at the end of the year. So you look, how does that team make that jump? Well, they've had the top 20 defense. Can the offense take the leap from – 50th range, you know, into where those championship caliber offenses are. That's kind of the question heading into the season. Well, and now we go to the backcourt because I think that's where that question gets answered because the one thing, and this has not just been Arkansas, but the theme we've talked about with the SEC, and everyone knows I bring it up every year, is just where does the SEC rank nationally in three-point shooting? And usually it's 27 or below in terms of what, out of 32 conferences or whatever. Um, that's just been the trend that we've seen in the SEC for a while now. Last season, we brought it up. They finished last, 32nd in conferences in terms of three-point shooting, 32% uh, as a whole for the conference. So Arkansas was right there in terms of 31.3% three-point shooting. Now, I think when you go to the backcourt, this is where the expectation is that 
if the shooting can improve, which remember, this is not just going to include guys in the backcourt because we're going to talk about other guys too that um, will be able to step out and make shots. But if you look at this backcourt, Max, um, obviously led by Devo Davis, who you know, we mentioned in the summer, one of the biggest, I think, returns of, for any team in the SEC, just because you have a guy coming back that has started 60 plus games. He's played there for what, four seasons now, played in a lot of games in the SEC. Um, we know we talk about him every year in terms of one of the best defenders out there, not just in the SEC, but nationally, you don't want that guy <laughs> defending you. Um, and you know, the three point shooting, great stat I saw from Blue Ribbon, uh, which was brought up in the, the, um, team preview that Bob Holt did, you know, Arkansas, if you look at the numbers down the stretch, right. And Devo Davis shot, was it 40, 41% from three, I think in his last 21 games before that, you know, he had been pretty much like a 25% or below three point shooter. So really improved there. And so everything starts with him and we'll obviously talk about some other guys too, but listen, getting him back was the biggest, again, one of the biggest moves in the SEC just because of the leadership and everything that he brings to this team. Yeah. Well, uh, you foreshadowed, uh, one of my picks for a, a little segment we have later on. Um, <laughs> I mean, is there any yeah. other choice really? I mean, I, no, I mean, there's not, there's not, um, I, you, you you love Devo Davis, and I, we also love this guy, Tremont Mark. Um, we've mentioned him in almost every wing video or Arkansas video we do. Um, last year, you had that lockdown wing defender with Jordan Walsh, but couldn't really add much offensively. Um, he was a freshman, so didn't have that veteran leadership role. That's what Tremont Mark brings. He brings down that lockdown wing defender. He's old. He's going to be 22. Uh, just played on the a team that was ranked top three nationally for like the entire year, knows how to win, knows how to play defense. Um, so that's a huge addition that is just kind of being swept under the rug. Uh, Al Ellis is also being swept under the rug as just some inefficient shot chucker. I mean, if you go back and watch some ACC basketball, like some actually the full games, you don't just watch the highlights. Al Ellis, like there were some, some times where – Louisville's down 15 and he claws them back by himself to down six. You know, he does what he can and then they fall back. You know, he was, he really can play. I'm telling you right now, Ellis can play. And then Layden Blocker, the, the, the freshman coming in, um, he's, he's, Moss has been posting about him on social media. He loves him already. It's tough. Um, so I think the backcourt upgrades, I don't think it gets any worse. Well, and I think, too, you mentioned, you know, Mark, and I think just the combination defensively, if you're thinking about it with yeah. Davis and Mark, I think that's you, – you've got a great starting point. Again, you know, you have to defend at five positions, but if you're talking about just those two guys and having the luxury of being able to put those two guys on the two best players elsewhere, um, that's a nice thing to have, especially when you're talking about guys, whether it's, you know, guards, wings, and such, and what they can do defensively, um, I think that's that's just a huge combination that you might not see in a lot of other places in the SEC this season. So that's one of the reasons why I think you know this team not just – I think they're going to take a jump offensively, but defensively they're going to have that aggressiveness that you look for, I think, in a must-coach team. Now, you can't foul, but, I mean, that's, you know, that, that's the way they play, right? And we know the SEC too. There's a lot of fouls in the SEC because of the physical style. Those two guys will be very physical – um, and then, you know, you look at the other guys, right? And we talk about the improved three-point shooting. You know, Khalif Battle comes in, right? 35% um, three-point shooter. Great free throw shooter, to, by, by the way. Um, that's something else that I think Arkansas would love to be a little bit better at. They shot 69.8% last year. That was 262nd nationally. So getting Battle coming in, good size, you know, 6'5 guy. Um, you mentioned Ellis. I think the thing with him is if you just take away the fact that he's not going to have to do so much, yeah. I think it makes him a better player, right? And – I think the fact is he's not going to have to force shots. He's not going to have to do all the different things that he had to do when every ACC team looked over and said, all right, he's the guy we got to guard. And think about it. I mean, they're going to have to guard him this year in the SEC, but he's going to have that much less pressure. He's got a much better supporting cast around him. Um, you know, and I think that will help him kind of not have the burden of scoring as much where he can kind of, you know, be someone that, that can pass the ball and get open shots for other people and um, feel good about that. And so, you know, Jeremiah Davenport, I know we talked about him this summer. Someone else scored a lot of points at Cincinnati, um, about a 35% shooter too, just like Khalif Battle. So I know those 35%, right? Like they're not 40, 42, but in the SEC, 35% is above average, right? Like that is an above average shooter. Yeah. And so 
I think, you know, these guys too, it's just finding those same kind of shots. Remember, Joseph Pinion's still on the roster too. I know he didn't play a ton last year, but he can come in if they need him in a spot to make a three, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Blocker. We, we talked about him, just a true point guard. Um, you know, something else I saw some of the quotes as well, just sort of the maturity, I think, for him is something they're really excited about. Um, and again, defensively too, I think he will be an asset. So, man, Max's backcourt, there's a lot to like, and they're deep. I mean, they are just a deep, deep team. I was just gonna uh, say that the, the depth, the is, the depth yeah. is there, yeah. So, um, that is clearly one of the strengths of this team. And, um, I think, quite honestly, if you look at it, if you just go one through everybody we talk about, I mean, it's I don't know that Muss has had a team like this in terms of just uh, the options he has to work with and sort of the the overall versatility to get exactly the way he wants to play. I think he's got those guys. All right. Um, let's talk about some of these guys in the front court, which we could probably spend 20 minutes talking about Trevin Brazil. Um, yep. And we have before, but again, clearly a guy who's going to be a, you know, he's going to be an NBA draft pick, potential you know, first round lottery type guy, depending on how the season goes. We've mentioned, I mean, we talk about versatility. That's the word I just said. I mean, he is, he can just do everything. And I think that's, you know, coming back from a very significant injury. I know they've not done anything, you know, to try to put him in a position to, you know, aggravate anything, have any setbacks whatsoever. They've gone throughout the process here. And I mean, it seems like Max, he's going to be ready to go to start the season. And you could probably search on our channel if you want to find everything we've talked about with Brazil this summer. I mean, we are very high on him. Um, to us, the top-rated power forward in the league heading into the season. And like I said earlier, the ability to step out and make shots, that is one of the things I'm most intrigued about with this team because it seems like they've got a lot of guys, not just on the perimeter, but adding Brazil back in the mix, guys who can step out and make shots, and they got to do that this season. Yeah, I was actually going to make Brazil my X factor, but I think he's too good to be an X factor. I think he's going to no. be like – I feel like an X factor has to kind of be a guy that just, you know, adds a little something to the team that makes him go. But yeah. Brazil's gonna be gonna be huge. We've 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 raved about him. Um the size, the the wingspan def defensively, you can talk about his offense and the spacing and what it's gonna do to open up the floor for other players. Um, I mean, you just think Devo shot 40% in conference last year with that abysmal spacing. I mean, just you know. How much of a leap is he going to be take going to be able to take with this spacing now? Um, and then yeah, I want to mention uh, Makai Mitchell. Um, he you know doesn't get talked about too much, but just does his job. You know, solid defensively. Uh, he's big, like uh, he's not you know I meant like skinny. You know, he's he's stout. You know, 250, 245. Um, he's going to be able to to be a good post defender against a guy like. Jani Broom, you know, where you're just going to have to throw bodies at him. This team has bodies. Makai Mitchell, Jalen Graham. Uh, you got Chandler Lawson, who came in from Memphis, who's going to be 23. You got Dennis J. Harris from Southern Miss, who's going to be 23. You got – you have mature adult men um, in the front court. Now, while while they, not, they may not put up 10 points a game and shoot the lights out, they're going to be able to do their job in their role. I feel like the front court is going to be um, is going to be one of those things where they might have an injury. It doesn't matter, you know, that kind of thing. It, where they're just going to have bodies on bodies. Um, it's just going to be. I hope Muss, you know, uses the rotation. He's kind of shortened it up in years past, but he's got the bodies this year, man. Yeah, I mean. There, there's less depth in the front court than there is in the back court, but I think. You see that on a lot of teams, though, for the most part, the way they're That's built. That's natural. Yeah, I, I I think sometimes we do make too much of that because I think it's just like we said. I mean, <laughs> Trevor Brazil can play on the perimeter. You know, he's not just the front. And so you can play a lot of different styles, and yeah, um, you know, they can go small if they want to with a team like this. And um, mm -hmm. listen, D Devo can be out there guarding, you know, centers. I mean, it's just <laughs> not what you want him to do. You want him to foul trouble, but. Um, I think that's again the the options that Mus has on this team are yeah, I mean there's a lot of experienced guys. And I think when I look at it from that standpoint, I know you're gonna bring that up in terms of looking at the trends here. Um, it's the overall experience for a team like this that was much younger last year, now gets much older in a league where not just in a league, but in a 
college basketball, where as yeah. we've seen, the older teams have taken advantage of kind of the transfer portal era to this point, where if you can get old, you can see some of these teams really put it together in March, which we saw that, you know, no greater example of that than this past March, when you look at some of these teams that made runs. Um, and so, yeah, I think when you combine all those things together, um, you know, as we look at some of these trends with this team, like I said earlier, the the most obvious trend is the fact that they've gotten to the Sweet 16 three straight years, back-to-back -back Elite Eights in that stretch. Um, you know, as I mentioned, they've they've won at least 20 games every season, which that's kind of – that used to be kind of that benchmark, but now it's like, yeah, it's just expected. You'd be disappointed yeah. if you didn't win more than 20 games every year. Uh, and especially with a team like this, I think that has very high potential, which we'll talk about in our prediction section. But um, a lot of, lot of good trends. Yeah, so – I mean, what adds to those trends just strengthens your argument with the uh, with the age there. This I put it on Twitter about a month ago, but this is the oldest team in uh, in the SEC. Yet. They averaged 21 and a half or 21.9, I think it is. Yeah, 21.9 years old is what this team averages. Jeremiah Davenport is 24 years old. They have multiple 23-year-olds, multiple 22-year-olds. Um, by fall, as a freshman, is going to be 20 this year. It's, that's not a normal freshman. Um, so it's just going to be an older team, um, easier to coach. The People are so worried about the chemistry when you have an old team like that, leader, natural leaders like that. It's, it, I think it, it's going to come together a lot quicker than people, people think. Um, and I wanted to talk about um, quick some betting numbers um, for futures for um, Arkansas. I actually took – Arkansas plus 3,000 in mid-July um, on Caesars. Caesars has moved that to plus 2,500. So the lines have been moving a little bit. I think you can still get 3,000 at FanDuel, but um, DraftKings has plus 1,800, which is which is like top five odds. So you just got to shop around uh, when you're looking at futures. But depending on where you look, some of the odds are saying this team has a good shot at making a deep run in the tournament. Um, I mean, it's hard to say right now, but they've got all the pieces. Yeah. I Max will be joining us too, by the way. This uh, when Brian Edwards, as we know, helps us do our football betting stuff. But Max, just like myself, a lot very into the betting scene, and we'll have some fun with that here in college basketball season uh, this year. But yeah, I mean, I think it's we'll, we'll get to the predictions in a second in terms of like what the yeah. ceiling is for this team but i think we all know it's very high and that'll kind of tie into it but uh, before we get to that max let's talk about our picks here for a couple of different guys let's i'm actually going to go reverse order that, that i have it listed x factor you said it earlier i think it's you know if we had to pick an x factor for this team to me i you know i can't just ever just pick one i've got to um i've got to pick multiple <laughs> you know how this works yeah. i can't do that um Tremont mark is the easy choice to me like in terms of if you're talking about a guy who's just going to come in and, like I said, I think form a defensive duo on the perimeter with Devo Davis that is just going to be fantastic, uh, I think he, to me, is the the easy choice. And Because I think he brings all those things that, when I look at this roster, I feel like he brings everything that you need to kind of tie things together. Meaning, you know, if you're talking about a team that can win a national championship, get to a Final Four, start a every game for a team that was the number one seed in the tournament was the number one team for what most of the year last year in Houston um, brings that kind of toughness on defense and just the, exactly. you know, like we said, playing for Kelvin Sampson too. I mean, I think you, you get a lot from doing that and I have it on my notes here. I have three words under trim on Mark, just a winner, like a guy yeah. who can just win. Yeah. And yeah. so like that, that to me is the easy choice, but I'm going to give you another one too. Um, and this is one that I think, I don't know exactly, you know, playing time wise, what this looks like, but I do think like it will be curious to see. I'm trying to pick one here, Max. I'm like, is it going to be this guy or this guy? You know, Jalen Graham's an interesting guy to me. Ooh. Like, I don't know if like X factor is necessarily the right fit in terms of like where you place him, but I think we saw, we saw last year and look rotation wise. I can't imagine that Muss has any idea <laughs> what the numbers are going to look like in terms of minutes right now. I, there's no way I could tell you that right now. <laughs> Just looking at this roster, I'm like, I know certain guys are going to play, but like beyond maybe, you know, two or three, something like that. Yeah. I have no idea what the minutes distribution looks like. And so I don't know what, I don't know how many minutes Jalen Graham gets this season, but if he can improve and, you know, get 
get better in a couple of those different areas. We saw, I mean, he can be, what would he have against Florida? Was it like 25, 26 points, something like that last year? He had a great game. And so, I mean, I think he's someone, the fact that he's stuck around to just, you know, be there, like, I don't know, man. Can, can he hit that next gear to kind of be someone that can be a solid rotation guy that can come out and get them, you know, 10 points, even if it's not every single game, but 10 to 15 points, something like that, just pop up out of nowhere. Uh, I'll put Jalen Graham in as just someone that I'm, I'm more curious and intrigued than anything just to see what his role is on this team. I like it. I, I like that pick. I was, I was thinking about, I was thinking about putting Jalen Graham as mine. Um, just, I just don't know, you know, what the front court minutes are going to shake out as. Yeah. I actually dove pretty deep into trying to decide who this X factor was going to be. And I, I chose Khalif battle and I chose Khalif battle because of his three point shooting that he brings. And now there's been a little bit of a narrative that like Arkansas just didn't have shooting, you know, doesn't have the shooting, you know, that's the, that's the, that's kind of the general knock on Arkansas. I, that just tells me you don't know who Arkansas brought in. Um, <laughs> if you look at three pointers per game, I know Khalif battle shot 35% and you would like it to be closer to 40, but he was very high volume. He made 2.9 threes per game. That was second in the American only behind uh, Harris at South Florida. Um, if you look at the SEC, the two there was two people tied for first with 2.9. That was Brandon Miller and Des Moines Hodge. Now they both shot like 38 and 40 percent, so a little bit more efficient. Um, but that's the Khalif Battle had been tied for first in the SEC. I'm not I'm not saying he would get the same volume here at Arkansas, yeah. but you look at other guys. Um, Devo Davis was 1.3 threes per game. Uh, Ricky Council was 0.9. They only Arkansas only had one guy on the on the team last year that made that averaged over one three a game. Now you bring in a guy that made basically three a game last year. Uh, I mean that that's huge. That's huge for the the spacing and the scoring and the the pop off the bench if he does come. You're looking at potential six man of the year award stuff like that. Like that is that's big. Um, so I just I just don't think that his three-point shooting is being talked about enough. And then you go into the Davenport and the other guys that they brought in that can shoot. I mean, they added shooting. I mean, I don't know how people are are denying that. So that's my X factor, Cleef Battle. I mean, I, I think there are a lot of good choices for like an X factor on this team, yeah. like we said, because of the depth. And so, and not knowing exactly how the minutes are going to be distributed just yet. So I think um, that makes it very interesting to sort of, try to figure out exactly who that guy will be, but um, some interesting choices there. And now we go to our pick for team MVP. And I mean, again, if you want to, you know, laugh at my ways, I could go one, a one B here because I think it would be Davis yeah. or Brazil, but I'm going to Devo Davis, um, not knocking Trevor Brazil, but like I said from the start, I just think Devo Davis is going to be the guy that literally holds everything together on the floor. Um, you know, he's the leader out there one of the best in the SEC, one of the most – I'd have to look at this, Max, but in terms of compare it to other guys, but he has to be one of, if not the most experienced player in the SEC returning in terms of how many games he's played, but don't yeah. hold me to that. I'll have to study that before the season starts and update that stat, but there's no question in my mind just because of how many games he started, how many games he's played in, uh, in the SEC, and as one of the best defenders out there, like we said, we think he's going to improve too in terms of the three-point shooting – Everything he brings to the table. Give me Devo Davis as the team MVP for the Hogs in 23-24. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can deny it. Um, <laughs> and just you nailed it. I don't have I don't have much to add. He's 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 the man. I mean, you look at what he did. You look at just look at what he did against against Kansas. I mean, he how is he not the team MVP? You know, I mean, yeah. And and if you're not if you're not a fan of of Arkansas, you, you, it's, it's one of those players where you're just like, yeah, he's good. There's really, you know, there's really no, there's really no denying um, what Devo does um, off the stat sheet. You know what I mean? Just what he, what he brings in, in the toughness and the leadership and all that. Um, yeah. Team MVP Devo. Definitely. There you go. And now we wrap up with our prediction for the Arkansas Razorbacks with the 23, 24 season. Now here's how we're going to do these guys. Um, we are obviously eventually going to do our power rankings for the, our preseason edition for the power ranking. So we're not going to give away where we're picking teams just yet, because then it doesn't give you a reason to watch the power ranking. So we've got to 
give you a little teaser, but here's how we're going to do it, Max. We're going to do kind of ceiling floor type things. If everything goes well, what can they be? If things go wrong, potentially, um, what's kind of the lowest point you could see this team uh, finishing? Um, I make it very clear. I mean, they, they're good enough to win the SEC. Um, this is pretty straightforward. They are good enough to win the SEC. They're good enough to make the Final Four. As you guys know, I never like making those kind of, oh, they're going to win it all or they're going to get to the Final Four Elite Eight because – we don't get a bracket until March, and until I see your bracket, I can't make those kind of bold claims uh, on that. But good enough to win the SEC, I think I'd be surprised, barring significant injuries to key players, if they finish outside the top three in the SEC. Uh, I think they are one of – I think they're one of two teams I will be able to say that about. Uh, I don't know about everybody else. I think everybody else, there, there could be a little bit more of a range uh, of possibilities. But to me, Arkansas is one of those couple teams that I would be surprised they finish outside the top three. If things don't go according to plan, what's the reason? The reason is, to me, it's either – the three-point shooting doesn't improve the way we think it's going to. Um, and here's the here's the honest thing. The chemistry just isn't there because you just you never know until you get guys on the floor. And like we said, we've seen that at times. I mean, that mm -hmm. was one of the discussions that was had last year and the year before and whatever, right? When they start 1-5 and five last year in the SEC, when they started 0-3 and three, had lost 5-6 of six the year before, that was the thing. Can the chemistry come together? There were other issues too, but – you just never know in the transfer portal era. So to me, if you want to play it that way, that would be the reason Arkansas, let's say, finishes outside the top three. But I'm not saying to the point where this isn't an NCAA tournament team because they are a surefire lock barring um, significant injuries. Yeah, uh, I, I pretty, I'm pretty much in, in perfect agreement with you. Um, I think that this is – I don't really see – a scenario if, if we're not if they're perfectly healthy i mean injuries obviously if an injury happens there goes the prediction out the window because it changes the team yeah. but so full health considered i don't see how they finish outside the top three um so if that if that doesn't go do, doesn't go the way i think it might be because of some chemistry issues like you said i think they have a really hard stretch right in the middle of february they get a wednesday game at home against tennessee and then they got to go at Mississippi State, at Texas A&M uh, the following Saturday and Wednesday. That's a really tough three-game stretch right in the heart of SEC season, right in mid-February. It's a tough time to grind out wins. So they have some tough stretches. They have some tough road games that I can see them dropping. Um, but if, if, if even then, I don't see them dropping outside the top half of the SEC. I just don't see it. Yeah, I don't either. And I know people may say, well, hey, they had an ex a significant injury last year and they still were fine. And I get that. But we're just looking at this from the preseason standpoint, right? Yeah. Like we're just saying, OK, like if we if we had to predict, like I said, I mean, they finished whatever right in the SEC. They, they were eight and ten in the SEC last year. Um, but if you if you just look at it from that standpoint, you're trying to find ways to be, you know, on the lower side. That would be it to me. It would be the a big, big injury um to perhaps multiple players or uh it would just be chemistry not coming together with the way we think it could and that would be the thing that would prevent them from being an sec title contender but for now i think they're an sec title contender and they've got all the tools they need to be successful you mentioned the schedule too uh very sort of um interesting obviously got battle for atlantis um where they start off with stanford they get memphis or michigan after that the big game of the year, which uh, I'm sure Max and I will have a lot of fun both previewing and uh, giving our reaction to the Duke game, November the 29th. I know Arkansas fans already have that one circled. Uh, that will be right here, ready. Right, there it is, already ready to go. Ready to um, go. Boy, that's going to be a, a tremendous atmosphere, as we know. And then, yeah, so uh, SEC schedule always a grind. But there you go, uh, our preview for the Arkansas Razorbacks in the 23-24 college basketball season. As you know, guys, we'll be doing this for every team in the SEC. And once again, I know it's football season, but just like with football, we got our team previews out a couple of months ahead of time. We're doing the same with basketball. Uh, that's how we roll around here. And as usual, I know sometimes uh, we have some technical issues, but we're starting to realize we don't know if that's necessarily our internet. I think it may be the, um, the provider that we use to do these recordings. And so uh, we are doing the best we can. So we appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. I know the screen kind of freezes sometimes, but... We do what we can with it, and we appreciate you guys watching and or listening 
uh, here at Southeastern 14. So hit that like button, hit subscribe, uh, more SEC basketball previews on the way. And again, lots of SEC football stuff, previews, predictions, rankings, reaction. It's all on the channel. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. But uh, we will talk to you again here soon. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back with more SEC basketball previews.